ketemu conflicts oke okay. uh, Ibrahim more uh, people uh, help the homeless people is that what you said yeah okay great uh lian um assalamu alaikum my name is lian rizwan i live in the united kingdom um one thing i would change is poverty poverty okay sayar assalamu alaikum my name is sayar i'm 11 years old i live in the uk and i'd like to change that no plastic goes into the oceans Okay. Sundon. Sundon. Assalamu alaikum. <laughs> My name is Kinza. I live in the United Kingdom and I'd like to change the way people think of um like when they litter everywhere. Okay. Littering. And your sister. Assalamu alaikum. My name's Iman and I live in the United Kingdom. Mm-hmm. And one thing I would like to change is to give more to the poor and needy. Okay, who are needy, Sara? Hi, my name is Sara. I'm from Singapore, and I am 11 years old. One thing I would change is climate change. Okay, climate change. Sami Allah. Sami Allah. Uliman Hamiza. Uh, I am 10 years old. I live in Ireland. And one thing I would like to change is that everyone in the world could be Muslim. Okay. I'd like to give that a Sylvia. Sylvia? Oh, sorry. Um, my name is Maya. I'm just using my mom's account. Okay. And um, I'm I live in Saudi Arabia, and I'm ten years old. And one thing I would like to change is bullying. Bullying, okay. Uh, next we have Talha. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Talha, and I am thirteen years old. I am from Pakistan, and I live in Qatar. One thing I would like to bring is human rights. Human rights, okay. And then next is Mariam. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Ishal. Ishal. Yes. Okay, Ishal. I'm 10 years old, and the thing I would like to change is how people kill animals for no reason. Okay. Uh, Rahil? Assalamu alaikum. My name is Rahil. I live in Saudi Arabia and I'm 11 years old. I would like to change water pollution. Water pollution. Okay, Ahmed and Saad. <clears throat> Assalamu alaikum. My name is Saad. I live in Qatar. If I would like to change one thing, um, it would be poverty. Poverty, okay. Ahmed? Assalamu alaikum. My name is Ahmed. I live in Qatar and I would like to bring justice. Justice, okay. Are you brothers, Talha, you and Saad? Yes, yes. Okay. Yes. <laughs> so all about human rights and justice. <laughs> okay, mashallah, mashallah. Hassan? Um, I am Hassan. I'm 11 years old. And I live in the UK and England. And what would you like to make better? I haven't thought of it. Sorry? I haven't thought of it. Say louder? I haven't thought of it. You haven't thought of it. How about you think of it now? What is something that you look at in the world and that bothers you? There must be something. Um... I make a medicine which will cure, which will cure any disease. Sorry? I make a medicine which will cure any disease. Medicine for people poor and needy? 
Is that what you said? To cure, to cure any disease. To cure any disease. Okay, good. Okay. Um, and then next we have Abdullah. Abdullah, unmute yourself. Hi, my name is Abdullah Adi Ahmad. And how old are you, Abdullah? Where do you live? I live in Maldives and I am 11 years old. And what would you like to make better in this world? I would like to change water pollution and air pollution that cause global warming in Earth. Okay. Uh, Omar. Uh, hi, my name is Omar Hamza. I am 14. Hello. And I'm in Australia. And what would you like to change, Omar? Uh, bullying, it's pretty big. Sorry? Bullying. Bullying, okay, good, yeah. bullying. Sani, assalamu alaikum. You also attended the same class just yesterday, right? Yeah. It's the same class, same thing. I know, <laughs> you invited me, so I decided to join. Sorry? Who invited me? That's why. Okay. Uh, it, well, you know, uh, that's the mailing list thing. So it just goes to everybody. And uh, that doesn't mean that you have to attend it. <laughs> anyway, uh, so you, uh, 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 it's the same thing. You don't have to attend. And uh, are you going to attend or what you're going to do? Okay, I will leave. Okay, Assalamu alaikum. Muhammad Fayaz. Oh, yes. Oh, Not ready. Okay. Uh, Ahmed, uh, okay, Ahmed and Saad, we did. Mustafa. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. Mustafa? Hello. Assalamu alaikum. How old are you, Mustafa? Where do you live? Um, I live in England. Your name is what? My name is Mustafa. Okay. And how old are you? Uh, 13. Where do you live? In England. And what is one thing that you would like to make better? Um, stop poverty. Poverty, okay. And then I see a phone number. What is your name? Girls? Six, seven, eight, seven, six, zero, something, something, something. Yeah? Can you speak? We have a mic. Assalamu alaikum. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, maybe, maybe you can type your intro in the chat box. Izyan. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Izyan. I live in the UK. And uh, one thing that I would like, um, sorry, I'm 11 years old. And one thing that I would like to change is, um, is uh, all the poverty and homeless people. Most people. Okay, Shireen's not quite right, uh, connected yet. Atif? Yeah, uh, my name's Atif. I live in the Kuwait. I live in Kuwait. I'm 12, and I would like to change uh, the people cutting down trees. Like deforestation. People cutting down trees, right. Okay. <clears throat> okay, uh, let's see who else is here. Are these other people ready? Um, now. Shireen can't hear me. I can see the, uh, like it's just frozen there. Sarah, turn on your camera. You have, uh, I'll give you one more minute um, to turn on your camera. Uh, after that, if it's not on, I'll remove you. And Fayaz, be ready in one minute. Be ready, sitting on a table and chair. <clears throat> okay, so um, today's class is about a real life hero. No, uh, not a fake superhero. <laughs> okay, so um, before I start, I forgot what I had to say. <laughs> That's not good. Um, okay, so 
<clears throat> often time you know you got you guys told me about all these different issues that you care about mm -hmm. and that you wish you could do something to make them better um but how many of you actually think you can make it better you'll get the opportunity to make it better <clears throat> mm -hmm. or how many oh, of you what? think that oh, well right now i'm too young but maybe when i'm older who thinks that? <laughs> okay, I see a lot more hands up now. Right, which is true, like right? a lot of the time. And um, I remember when I was young being really frustrated by that. When am I going to be older? <laughs> right, and then I'll do all these things. Um, but um, unfortunately, this is the kind of world we live in where children um, are often underestimated. But I believe and I have seen that, I've proven that, I've seen, uh, shown, um, you know, seen so many kids who have done this, that children, the ability you guys have right now, adults don't have that. The creativity you have right now, adults don't have that. The other skills, there's so many other things that you guys have uh, that adults don't have. That's why so many years ago, when I decided to launch Iman Power, I could have done like Iman Power for adults. And I'm like, no way. <laughs> I'm going to work with the children. Because the enthusiasm you have, adults don't have that. So that's, that's where the energy comes from, which actually empowers people to do good work. And you guys have that. But unfortunately, um, not all, all the time, you know, people see it that way. And so children can be underestimated. But that's not the only reason. A lot of the time, children themselves underestimate themselves. Like, I'm just scared. What can I do? <laughs> right? I'm just going to go play game. When I'm older, I'll do something. Right? So kids themselves underestimate their own self, thinking, well, I'm just 10. I'm just 13. What can I do? You know, it's an adult's world. But today, I'm going to, that's why I'm giving you an example of a real life teenager. A little boy who didn't have this attitude, who had a very different attitude. He didn't say, what can I do? But he said, what can I do? What can I do? He had a very different attitude. Same question for different attitude. And that is Osama ibn Zaid. Osama ibn Zaid was the son of, who was his father? Zaid bin Hartha. Zaid bin Hartha. Now Talha knows the whole story. I hope you will not spoil it. <laughs> okay. So, uh, Zed ibn Haritha. Who was he? Raise your hand. Oh, that He was. Yeah, Ibrahim? The adopted son of the Prophet. Sorry. Very good. He was the adopted son of Prophet Muhammad. Now, he was also, um, when he was a little boy, he was kidnapped. And he was then sold into slavery. And then when Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu you know, he came to him, he adopted him as a son. Now, when you think of slaves, do you think of white people or black people? None. Okay, who thinks black? No. Most of you. Do you know what? At that time, a thousand years ago, most of the slaves were not necessarily black people. Actually, many of them were European, white people, lighter skinned people. Okay, so Zed was not a black person. He was a lighter skinned person. He got married to Um Ayman and she was a black lady, right? Um, and she ha they had a son, Osama. Osama then took the color of his mother. So he was a black boy. He was a black boy growing up in Mecca, son of a slave. Do you think people and other children, other people respected him a lot? No, no, right? no. So like Omar said, you know, he was, um, you know, you uh, talked about bullying. He went to, through bullying, right? I mean, that's, that's he, he's being looked down on uh, by other people because of his skin color, because of his lineage. You are not Arab. Your father is a slave, right? And also on top of that, they became Muslims in Mecca. Early Muslims in Mecca, did people treat them really well? No. Do you know how many Muslims there were in Mecca in those days before Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu migrated to Medina? Ten years he gave dawah, more than ten years, and they were just about a hundred Muslims. 
You think life was easy for them there? No, right? They did not, not even have any number. Like, so this was pretty hard for them. Um, and so they left finally, you know, um, they got refuge uh, in Medina and Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam asked the Muslims to migrate. They started migrating and so did Osama with his family. He became a refugee and we know that a refugee's life is very difficult. They don't know where, what will happen when they go to the new destination. They leave a lot behind. And so he comes to Medina. And now as soon as the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came to Medina, very soon after that, there was a battle. Which battle was that? Uh, yeah, Talha knows. Who else knows? <laughs> okay, Talha. The battle of Badr. Badr, right? And in battle of Badr, how many? What is happening? Uh, Mustafa. Uh, something happened to Mustafa, Mustafa. Uh, you can try. Um, But uh, I'm, unfortunately, I wouldn't be able to help everybody like one on one like that. But I'll just do this as, as a first one. Um, is there any other thing in the chart box that I need to pay attention to? No. Yeah. 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 <laughs> okay. Okay. So, Badal. 300 Muslims, how many Quraysh? More than a thousand with heavy weaponry. Muslims not at all prepared for battle. They were not planning on it, it just happened. The Quraysh decided this is it, we will finish the Muslims today. And that Muslims, did the Muslims think they will win for sure? Actually, they were worried we are all going to die today. Even Prophet Muhammad says He was worried this will be the end of Islam. And how do we know that? Because that's a dua he was making. That if we all die today, Islam will end today. So give us victory. He was spending the night making, begging Allah for help. Anyway, so here's this army now preparing for battle. They're worried, should we fight or not? They decide to fight. And, um, you know, this is a really scary position. And it, between that, there is a little boy, Osama. He's eight years old. And he sees uh, what's happening. And he's not a, a, a kid who like, okay. That's really sad what's happening. That's scary. I'm really worried. I'll go play some games. I'll play with my marbles. <laughs> no, he was not that kind of a boy. A lot of the time, one of the reasons we go to the games is because we are too stressed, right? You're like, I'm so stressed, there's so much to do. So we go back to the games to relieve our stress. This is okay for a little while, uh, but not so much of that, you know, we can't we just, that's the escape we make for our responsibility. Anyway, that was not Mustafa, uh, sorry, that was not <laughs> Osama's attitude. And he said that, uh, I, what can I do? So even though he's just eight years old, he didn't say, this is an adult's battle. I'm just eight years old. There's no place here for me. No way anybody, do you think anybody will allow him to participate in the battle? No. Yeah. Right? But he doesn't care about that. <laughs> he still wants to get, I try to seek this opportunity. He still wants to try. So he goes to his father and he says, dad, please allow me to fight in this battle. And his father says, can you hold up a sword? <laughs> now, not, uh, it, you know, has anybody held up a sword? A real one, I mean. Oh. Nobody, right? A sword is heavy. A real sword. You have Ibrahim? A real sword is heavy, isn't it? Yeah. And you need to, you can't just like lift it up as you like. You need to know how to, you know, use the sword. Otherwise, you'll kill yourself. Right? Cut your own hand or feet. So he said to Osama, uh, and Osama said, no, I can't. But remember, what was Osama's attitude? What can I do? So he asked himself, what can I do? I can shoot bows and arrows. And his father says, yeah, but I'm worried the horsemen with the swords will hit you. And you won't be, he can't fight back, right? 
if a ho- like he's shooting with his bows and arrows, the horseman comes close to him. There's no way he can fight by like you know the horseman uh, with the sword. So this is um he, this is not the right time for you. Uh, maybe you know when you're older, then you can fight. So he's like really disappointed. Has that ever happened to you? Somebody told you is this you are too young right now. <laughs> okay. And this is pretty annoying. This was the most one of the most annoying things for me when I was growing up. So he's just being told that. But he knows that. I mean, but he's not gonna give up, right? He's the kid who's always trying to uh, challenge what adults think he can or cannot do. So he next year there's another battle, and that battle was. Oh, Battle of a battle of who raise your hand? Yeah, Abdurrahman. Uhud. Uhud. Did Muslims win this battle? No, they almost lost this battle. Right? It was pretty much a draw. A lot of Muslims died in this battle. Prophet Muhammad says almost got killed in this battle. This was a very tough one as well. Osama. Clearly, he had been. Do you think he had been practicing to lift up a sword all this time? Clearly, because he thought my father said, "When I can lift up a sword." <laughs> you know, last time he asked me, "Can I lift up a sword?" So he had been practicing clearly. So he comes to the battleground with the sword, but guess what? The sword is taller than him. He's nine years old, and the sword was taller than him. And he, there's this little boy. walking in the battleground with a sword that is larger than him so everybody is like what <laughs> what is going on here all the people are looking at him and they're like who is this boy what is he trying to do uh anyways they were though very impressed by his enthusiasm that this even though it's so heavy for him what is he thinking is he going to fight with this sword <laughs> How is he going to fight with this sword? But he is going to try, and everybody could see that this boy knows. Obviously, this is you know he could get killed here, but he wants to try. He doesn't want to just sit and play with his marbles in his home. He wants to try. But again, he was told. Again, he was told no. <laughs> right, you're too young. But his father said, "You need to learn the art of war." Oh, that's something I can do, right? And uh, so he said, "Okay, I can spend my time learning if I can't fight yet." So he focused on learning. Now, in battle, what is more important, strategy or muscle power? Strategy. Strategy, strategy. right? Strategy. strategy is more important. So he said, "I'm going to learn the strategy of war." So every time his father would come home. He would ask like his father used to go in a lot of battle. He was really great. He was a tag. Tell me everything about it. What happened? <laughs> Who did you fight? How did you fight? What was the strategy? What did the archers do? What did the armor like? His dad would give him all the details. Now at those times were there schools? No. This is how people learn. There were no books, right? Today there's actually a book called Art of War. <laughs> right anyway it's not actually a war to war um uh, anyways but so he would learn all this strategy from his father from other people not just his dad but other people too including prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was excellent strategizer he was excellent strategizer no, uh, and that's not just uh, i mean uh, in battle one of the reasons muslims defeated the quraish was because prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam strategy was very different quraish were used to fighting in a different way prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam fought in a very different way and anyway he strategized everything even in hijra he strategized inshallah i'll teach you about that in um, rising heroes anyway so uh, he learned from him he learned from other companions and he is becoming a good strategizer learning to like you guys right now if you can't do something you focus on learning about it, right maybe if you think i can't change the human like do something about the human rights i can't do something about bullying i can't do something about the environment you learn about it what is there to be done what are the uh, options what are the solutions right you get information about it okay then what happens then what happens that 
if he passes he will be a martyr and if he doesn't then he has achieved what he wanted to achieve right but uh, yeah we do get you know if muslims die in a battle like for the sake of allah then yeah they are a martyr but that doesn't mean we have to be i mean that doesn't mean like we have to be so dumb like an eight year old has no chance right <laughs> like that's just like committing suicide isn't it he has no chance to win so we also have to be smart in battles right so an 8 year old soldier is not going to be your strength he's probably going to become a weakness for you because then you're trying to protect that little boy um so it, 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 you know that's islam is not about being i mean islam is about being smart right so and that's what prophet muhammad says him always did he was smart about these things anyways his father is sent to a battle battle of muta remember that name because that will we'll use that in a game later on <coughs> so battle of muta was against the roman army which was big superpower of that time huge huge weaponry and romans have you seen roman armies like in movies pictures games right i used to play a uh, game petronas or something or like roman armies there the roman armies are like really great or were really great in strategizing they were great strategizers right in their battle they had great um, plans and methods of fighting and plus there are so many of them who speaking abdullah abdullah be quiet <laughs> or mute yourself if you want to talk to yourself <laughs> okay so uh uh zaid radiyallahu anhu was sent to this uh, to fight this army and he was the leader of the army right um and then prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam appointed some deputy leaders who will become in charge in case he dies so then um Prophet Muhammad says him uh, send this army army goes they realize this is much bigger than we thought but they decide to fight anyways uh they thought maybe we have a chance and they fought and this was just not a battle they could win it was way too hard and they started losing very soon so they um, now azad radiyallahu who was the leader and he got shot leader of the army got shot in and osama was also in this battle he had been allowed to go and now he was also in this battle he was a little older and his father gets shot right in front of his eyes imagine do you think that was easy to watch the father you love so much no dying in right in front of you so he was very sad and not only his father but a lot of people he loved he cared about died that day a lot of people prophet muhammad sai sam cared about his family members his friends died that day and this was very tough al khalid bin walid radiyallahu who knows khalid bin walid radiyallahu anhu what is the nickname he was given sword of allah sword of allah right because he was just so good he was very good strategizer right one of the reasons why muslims had lost ohud was because of khalid bin walid because he at that time he was fighting on the opposite side right he was on the enemies he hadn't become muslim muslim by then so he, he never lost the battle huh he never lost the battle yeah he never lost the battle so he came up with the strategy which actually almost defeated the muslims in battle of ohud um and um, um anyway so later on of course he became a muslim and he was really great but uh so um, anyway so he then becomes in charge he retreats he takes the army back uh he you know so to save as many lives as we can there's no way we can win this battle so try to save ourselves and they come back it's a very sad day very sad time anyways osama is growing up now prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam he for him he's like a loving you know he loves him like a grandson right like his own son and he takes care of him uh the companions know that the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam loves him very much uh he honors him when the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam went back to makka the victory of makka who knows about that 
So when they went back to Makkah, was there any fighting? No. He entered with this massive army of 10,000 people, but peacefully. And how did he enter? Like, yeah, I'm back now. No. <laughs> I'll teach you Quraysh. No. He entered with his head bowed. On his camel, he was, his head was bowed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, humbling himself. And you know who was sitting behind him on this camel? Osama. A little black boy. And everybody like, who is this boy? Right? Especially the Quraysh, right? Like, what? what's this boy sitting behind little Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Wouldn't you have loved to be sitting behind him? Yeah. Osama gets that opportunity. Then uh, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam enters Kaaba, enters into the Kaaba, like opens the door of the Kaaba, goes in, and the person who goes in with him is Osama. So everybody's watching, right? Uh, and there was still racism amongst those people. And they're watching how the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is honoring this young black boy, son of a slave. Anyways, what happens next? Osama makes a huge mistake. Okay, I don't know if it happened next or before. <laughs> this is not necessarily in sequence. Uh, Osama makes a huge mistake, huge mistake. One he should not have made because he knows better. He tells, Pro and actually he didn't think he made a mistake. Does that happen to you sometimes? You do something and then you like, your parents tell you that wasn't, you weren't supposed to, do that, right? So he thought what he did was the right thing. So he was telling Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu about what happened. He said, Ya Rasulullah, we were in the middle of the battle. Now in the battle, what are sub soldiers supposed to do? Make best friends with the enemy? <laughs> No, what are they there for? To kill each other, right? Yeah, right? Normally, when I say, oh, somebody kills somebody, and it's all like, oh, bad person. <laughs> but isn't that what a soldier supposed to do? A good soldier? Yeah, he defeats the enemy, he kills the enemy, right? So that's Osama's job there. He has to kill as many, you know, um, I mean, uh, I mean, not as many, but he has to defeat the enemy. And if that requires killing another enemy, then that's what he's supposed to do. Okay, so what happens? In the middle of the battle, there is this man who is attacking Osama and one of his companions. He's attacking him, attacking him, attacking him. And Osama, you know, is like um, uh, 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 being defeated by this man, right? Almost about to be killed. This man is an enemy of Islam. He hates Islam. He hates Muslims. So much so that he has come in this army. He hates Islam so much that he is trying to kill the Muslims. So he is attacking Osama, attacking and trying to kill him. And Osama is almost being defeated by him. And then suddenly Osama overcomes him. And now Osama takes his sword and he's just about to kill this man. He's just about to, you know, he has his sword right near him. And the man says, la ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah. Why do you think he said that? For saving okay, his life. Okay, 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 okay. Raise your hand. <laughs> okay. Uh, hold on. Who's raising their hands? Uh, Mustafa. Um, so, because if someone says, La ilaha illallah, then you can't kill them in the world. Why not? I don't know why, but I know that you can't. My, my, that wasn't my question, anyways. My question is that why did he say it? So he doesn't get I, killed. Because he didn't want to get killed. Okay. Uh, Sarah? Yeah, Hassan, I'm coming to you. Hold on. Sarah? He repented. Sorry? He repented. Make me. Okay, he repented. Hassan? Because um, uh, if you're a martyr in uh, like anywhere, when you go to Jannah and like he's in war. He but this man that. wasn't a Muslim. How could he be a martyr? Do you think he became a Muslim? When he said La ilaha illallah, did he say La ilaha illallah because he wanted to be a martyr? You're confused. You're, you're huh? confused. You're Sorry? Confused. 
you're confused okay let me explain again yeah that's what i thought that's a, so so there is the enemy right the enemy guy is trying to kill osama because he hates muslims right and osama is being killed by this man but then suddenly osama becomes you know overcomes this man and he's like now i you know osama is stronger than him and he's about to just kill this enemy and the enemy says la ilaha illallah the enemy who was just trying to kill the muslims just as he's about to be killed says la ilaha illallah why did he say that that's my question okay yes samira sumera samira ha huh? he accepted islam why do you think he really accepted islam at that second okay talha he said la ilaha illallah so that um once you say la ilaha illallah you become a muslim Mm-hmm. and he thought that if he said la ilaha illallah then osama wouldn't kill him that osama wouldn't kill him okay um yeah mustafa go on. sorry hasan go on um so then uh, when if when he got into the muslims army he can like he can kill like the muslims one by one okay yeah that could be his plan yeah okay this man so there are two things one What happens as soon as you say la ilaha illallah? You become a Muslim. And what happens to all your previous actions? All your previous actions are erased, right? Good or bad. You're starting from scratch again, right? No no more sins. So he's is he completely innocent if he did mean it? When he said la ilaha illallah, does he become an innocent man? Yes. Yeah. A uh, secondly, is he surrendering? Yes. Yeah, yes. he's surrendering, right? Yeah. Can yes. uh, should you, and um and as Muslims we don't fight people who surrender to us, do we? No. We fight no. people who are fighting us, not just uh, you know, people who not people who you know, uh are not fighting us. That's the second thing. Anyways, he tells Prophet Muhammad says some what happened. Now, most likely, when we hear the story, just like Osama thought, it seems to me as well, and it seems to I'm sure all of you, uh, my most of you, that this guy did not at all mean la ilaha illallah. Do you think he actually accepted Allah to be his God at that second when he was about to be killed? Probably no. not, right? But do we know that for sure? No. Did Osama know that for sure? No. No. So what did Osama do? Osama killed him. Osama killed him because Osama thought that he only said it because he wanted me to stop and he uh, didn't want him to kill him. So he thought and that's the right thing to do, right? Obviously he didn't mean it. One second I always trying to kill Muslims, another second he like, yeah, la ilaha illallah. <laughs> so, uh he tells the Prophet Muhammad says and this happened. Prophet Muhammad says him is very upset. he says to osama but what would you do with la ilaha illallah 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 he keeps on saying it and saying it and saying it again and again and again until he leaves osama is so devastated what have i done i should have known better he just you know did something wrong really really wrong can you judge what is in somebody's heart whether this guy really meant it or not no, we can't judge can allah judge what no. is in somebody's heart absolutely allah will judge you according yes. to what is in your heart we human beings can't do that allah knows whether this man meant it or not we don't know 
right? What what could have Osama done? He's in the battleground. He leaves this man. This man said, "La ilaha illallah." This and then what happens? If this guy didn't mean it, it's possible that Osama uh, hears "La ilaha illallah" and he withdraws. Is it possible that if this man didn't mean it, he would go and attack Osama again? Yeah. At that point, could Osama have attacked and killed him? Yes. Yes. Because yes. then yes. this man's actions, we judge by actions. This man's action contradict his words, isn't it? They show us what he really meant or not. So then Osama could have killed him, but Osama didn't do that. He just killed him. So he has made a huge mistake. What does Islam say about unfairly killing one person? Even one person. That even killing one person is like killing entire humanity. Imagine if you had to bear the burden of a sin like that. And Rasulullah in front of you, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was upset with you. Can you imagine the worst thing you have done? Last time your parents were really upset with you and you felt really guilty. Can you all think of something like that? You don't have to tell me. I don't even want to know. Don't tell me. <laughs> But can you think of it in your mind? No. I'll try to. What was the last thing, really bad thing that you did that you felt really bad about? Okay, what does Shaitan do after he makes, come, uh, you know, gets you to make a mistake? What's his next step? A victory dance? Yes, I got him. <laughs> I can go sleep now. Yeah, Ibrahim. It basically continues. So, what of Shaitan? Basically, feel really bad, and then he makes you feel like, oh, I'm the worst person in the world. I've done this. Exactly <laughs> right. Now he, Shaitan, is gonna come back to you, because he knows with one simple action, no matter how much time he had spent you to commit that sin. With one simple action, you can undo everything he just did. And what's that action? Astaghfar. 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 Right? Imagine, like Shaitan got Adam, alayhi salam. He so like for such a long time, and he got Adam. Adam, just eat from the tree. Come on, eat from the tree. It will be so good. He's trying all kinds of ways. And then Adam, alayhi salam, ask Allah for forgiveness. Undo how all his work. Right. So, uh, one, you know, our forgiveness. No, Allah says in the Quran that He, Allah, tells us about Himself that I am Ghafur al Wadud. Why did Allah put these two things together? Ghafur means forgiving. Wadud means loving. Why do you think He put them together? Because He's telling you that I will forgive you, and I will love you. Allah loves to forgive. Yeah, Allah loves to forgive, and it's possible that you made a huge mistake, the worst mistake of your life. But the way you repented, but the your repentance made Allah love you even more than He loved you before. So it's possible that your mistakes turns out to be the best thing that happened to you. <laughs> Because of how you repented, right? Allah loves to forgive you. He loves to forgive you. You know, but Shaitan doesn't want you to know that, does he? So he would come to you and say, "What have you done, Kinza? Leon, that was horrible. Sad. Allah hates you now. You are going to go to hell for sure. No, Allah doesn't hate you." <laughs> I'm just using all these examples, uh, but Allah, uh, he why is he saying this? He says that to me too, Ariba. You are such a bad person. Like I mean, I, I when I do something wrong, oh, Shadan comes to me and says a lot of really horrible things. Like you teach people and still you did this, right? You are just the worst <laughs> person. You should stop teaching, <laughs> right? But I know better. What do I know? That this is Shadan speaking. Right, and Allah is not like that. Allah doesn't want me to be perfect. Does Allah want you to be perfect? 
You think Allah wants you to be perfect? Sinless? Without any sins? No. If Allah wanted you, he would have made you an angel. He made you better than angels. Didn't he? Didn't Allah say that you are better than angels? Your design. Yeah. And what is part of your design? Your ability to make mistakes. You got angel. Allah gave you ability to make mistakes. And Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi said, if human beings were not to make commit mistakes, Allah would not even have created them. Allah would have created another creation who would make mistakes so Allah could forgive them. Allah loves to forgive. And do we learn from our mistakes? Yeah, a lot. The one of the best ways in your life to learn is from your failures, from your mistakes. Better than school, better than teachers, books. One of the best ways to learn would be from your own mistakes. So these mistakes are our teachers. If we are smart, we will learn from them eventually. Anyway, so Osama takes on this attitude and he says, I'm going to seek forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he, he does more and more and more good. And finally, one day, he is so good. He has done so well that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa invites him to his home and says, Osama, sit here. Osama sits near him and said, Osama, I'm sending another army to fight the Romans. Remember Romans, where his father died, very difficult battle for Muslims. And he says, and you are going to be the commander of this army, the leader of this army. Osama is still a teenager. And he is going to be the commander of the army. Who are the people under his command? Where is Saad? Who are the people under his command? Ya Talha? Khalid bin Walid. Abu Khalid Bakar. bin Walid is under the command of this teenage boy. Right? Osama is going to tell Khalid bin Walid, Khalid, go here. Khalid, do this. Osama will order Khalid bin Walid. Yes, Ibrahim? Uh, wait, what was Hasid Umar? Yeah, hmm? Umar who was one of them people under his command Abu Bakr who was under his command all these great companions the best people were under the command of this teenage boy how did this happen how can this happen isn't that incredible was he some kind of a genius? No, it was just a normal boy. A normal boy who made big mistakes, as we just saw. But how did he achieve this? Because when he was little boy, you know, from when he was a little boy, and he's still young, right? He's still a teenager. He did not take on the attitude, oh, I'm a kid. Maybe when I am 20 years old, I'll do something. He was like, what can I do now? Right? Even when adults underestimated him, he said, okay, fine. I will do other things, right? I'll go learn. He took opportunities. He sought opportunities, grabbed them when they presented to him. And he did his very best. He wasn't sitting there like, I'm a kid. What can I do? Let me go and play with marbles, <laughs> right? He was working hard to prove himself and he proved himself. What, okay, everybody tell me in the chat box. <laughs> What do you think are some qualities of a good leader of an army? And these are the qualities Osama clearly had, right? So tell me in the chat box. Because <clears throat> lots of them. So, uh, okay, future thinking, right? He needs to be very good. This is really good one, by the way. Who said that future thinking? Abdurrahman and Ibrahim, very good. He needs to look forward, right? Not just be thinking about now, but planning ahead. Um, uh, responsibility, very good. Is this a good name? Who is this person? Is this a good name? I don't even know who this person is. 
anyways um but your answer is good responsibility he is responsible whatever decisions need to like is it he is responsible for the lives of other human beings right he makes one wrong decision hundreds of people can die isn't that true mm. he is the leader if he makes one stupid decision hundreds of soldiers can die so he is has huge responsibility on his shoulders he has to make the right choices right decision strategy very good right yes we very good strategizer teamwork very good lian and saya right this is teamwork lots of time you don't think of it like that but the army is also teamwork he needs to know who can do what well khalid is going to do this well omar will do this well get him to do that work get abubakar to do this work right he needs to know his team really well and can conflicts happen in the team yeah he needs to be able to resolve those conflicts being honest okay uh trustworthy okay. yeah collaborative very good talha so collaborative now can a leader be like this is my idea and we will just do what i told you to do i don't care what you are thinking right <laughs> sometimes the leader has to be like that right when he knows he's right but most of the time the leader is not going to be like that right a leader has to be collaborative so if abu bakr comes up with an idea we should take that route then uh, umar uh, oh, sorry osama can't be no abu bakar i am the leader we will only do what i told you to do my idea is better no he he humbles himself and he says no abu bakar's idea is better than mine let's take his opinion right and he needs to be consultative right he needs to go and consult others that's how prophet muhammad sallam was ambitious Ma uh, yeah uh, mapping Mustafa, Mustafa, Mustafa. Okay, focus on the teacher. <laughs> focus, focus. Yeah, resolving co civil conflicts. Respect to the soldier. Yeah, he needs to be respectful of others. What else? Does he need to be a good speaker, motivator? Yeah, he needs to be very decisive. Imagine, like somebody comes. Can we do this? Can we? Should we send out the archers? And like, let me think about. It. <laughs> I'll tell you tomorrow. I have a lot of time. He needs to be quick. making quick decisions right yeah he is met can he be a pessimist do you know what is a pessimist or does he need to be a real visionary thinking positively yeah he needs to be very realistic and thinking positively right he can't be like oh we're just going to lose anyways i can't do this <laughs> can he do the like we're going to win this battle okay so he was all that he had developed he had learned he had tried so hard and he had learned those skills he didn't wait till i will grow up and then i will do that he practiced those skills all those years that's why prophet muhammad sallam chose him above everybody else do you think everybody liked this decision of making osama the leader no obviously not mm -hmm. right people criticized him people criticized prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam for making this decision and so he stood up and he said osama is well osama deserves this position he deserves to be the leader of this army meaning he has all the qualities he deserves to be the leader and he is among the best of you telling them because you're underestimating him because he's a teenage boy because of his age don't you dare you might they might be underestimating him because of the color of his skin because of his lineage so don't you dare right that's the message prophet muhammad sallam is sending them he deserves that position doesn't matter what his age is he has earned that place So now he goes in to the battle. He leaves the city of Medina, and the army, you know, moves. Obviously, is a huge army. It's not like straight away going. It uh, goes out, camps in one place, moves a little bit. So it goes out. It camps just outside Medina. Um, and then a messenger comes running. Osama, you have to come back. You have to come back. What happened? 
Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu is very sick. You have to come back right now. Osama um, comes back. Lots of other people probably come back with him. And he says, what happened? Uh, he sees Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu is very sick. He's lying in his bed. He can't speak. He can't move. He can't talk. He can't stand up. He can't sit up. He just sits near him. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu puts his hand on Osama, kisses him, makes dua for him. But he can't speak. Osama just knows he's making dua for me. Next day, something incredible happened. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu just got better. Suddenly, surprisingly. Just, he just got better. And he's now walking about, talking to people, smiling. You know, he looks good. And he tells Osama, Osama, go to the battle with the blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Osama goes to the battle again. They go to the camp again. And again, a messenger, I'm Osama, your mother has sent me. You have to come back right now. What happened? Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is dying. And Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he, went, he came back. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam died. He died that day. Osama is, do you think he was happy? He was so sad. This was the darkest day in Medina. This is the worst thing that happened to them. Most difficult thing. The biggest calamity. This is the biggest hardship that's happened to you. If he was alive today, you would still see him walking down the street. Those people did see him walking down the street, smiling. No, they won't. They loved him more than they loved their fathers. Their prophet. No more Quran being revealed now as well. The companions were really sad. Ali, you guys know Ali radiallahu anhu? He locked himself in his house. He wouldn't come out. So sad. Umar radiallahu anhu took up his sword and he says, who says Muhammad has died? I'll kill them. But he has. Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu comes. He sees the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam lying there dead. He kisses his forehead. He comes out and he says to the people, anybody who thought, anybody who worshipped Muhammad know that he is dead. And anybody who worshipped Allah know that Allah is always living and he never dies. This is a leader, Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. This is the worst thing that Abu Bakr's best friend, his prophet, just died. And look at the strength Abu Bakr is showing. He brought strength to all the people. He knew exactly what to tell them. Umar radiallahu anhu, who, when he was standing there with his sword ready to kill anybody who says Muhammad is dead, Abu Bakr comes out, says those words. Umar just falls down. <laughs> He is like, now it sinks into him that this has really happened. Just the shock of it. This wasn't funny at all. He's just so, now he realizes he's gone. I will never talk to him in this world again. His best friend, his prophet. How will he, you know, go on and live in this city without him? Do you think the army's morale is really high right now? No. And is the morale of the army important? Yes. Important. So Osama's job is very difficult now. On top of that, the enemies of Islam and all the people, Quraysh who had just become Muslim, a lot of the Quraysh, so you don't know, they started leaving Islam. A lot of the people who had new Muslims started leaving Islam. Oh, their prophet has died. Let's leave this religion. A lot of the enemies start thought, okay, we can go and attack them. Their prophet has died. Very great danger. Very dangerous position Medina was in. Do you think this is a good time for army to go and fight the Romans? No. no. So people say, no, we should not send this army. Abu Bakr radiallahu who says, yeah, this is dangerous. We can get attacked. But even if we get attacked, 
and the armies come and kill us all and we our dead bodies are lying here and vultures come and eat us i will not cancel a command given by prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam i will not cancel a command given by prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam so he says to usama to go to the battle now of course abu bakr is not going uh, because he's the khalifa he goes now he's a khalifa now right he's the leader the president the king of the muslims right uh, how would you want to understand this but he's a khalifa so he goes to usama to ask his permission for something the khalifa is going to ask this teenage boy for permission for what he says would you please leave omar behind because i need his help in medina to run things now omar can't say i'm going or not because who is in charge of omar osama osama a teenage boy osama <laughs> omar is like you know two three times older than osama <laughs> but he's in charge of him so he says yes of course he can stay then abu bakr gives him some advice which like prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam also used to even in battles muslims can't just go crazy like we'll just do whatever Muslims don't believe everything goes in the war. In war, you can do whatever you want. No, we don't believe that. Even in battle, we have good manners. We have etiquettes. So Abu Bakr told him, "Do not kill women. Do not kill children. Do not kill old men. Do not kill a single animal unless you need to eat them. Do not kill even a single tree. Do not cut down a single tree unless it's blocking the way." and there are more rules but any anyway, that's a brief anyways osama heads out with his army he charges in up he's he's on his father's horse and he is so good he strategizes so well plans so well he runs this battle so well he defeats the romans he defeats them a big defeat for the romans crushed by osama's army totally right now he comes back to medina victorious defeated by the army of this teenage boy and the people of medina are just so happy and they are waiting outside the city to cheer him and you know the enemies of islam this was a big like warning for them la oh, islam is not weak muslims are not weak look at that teenager from them right look at their armies look at the muslims they're very strong so they stopped right that strengthened the muslims at that time so osama comes back but before he can go in uh, before he goes home he has one more thing to do and that is to pray two rak'ah nafl to thank allah because he knows he was only victorious because allah gave him victory he only had those skills because allah gave him just like you only solve a math problem well because allah gave you the ability you only get that grade that prize whether it's sport whether it's school because allah allowed you he gave you the ability do you pray to rakat nafil when you get a good grade when you solve a good problem that you thought you can't go and thank allah do sujood to pray pray to rakat nafil to thank allah for it anyway so osama this is osama's story up until he was a teenager he died when he was in his 70s so lot more but i will stop here and now i want to ask you do you want to be heroes real life heroes when do you guys feel like heroes do you ever feel like heroes probably how about when you are playing a game does that give you that feeling of overcoming a challenge defeating an army <laughs> right yes but is that a real real challenge like a real challenge a real victory are you a real hero or a no. fake one no but how about being a real life hero so man you know this is exactly why i launched iman power because i wanted to give you guys the opportunity to be real life heroes So I created this program, which will teach you what it takes to be a real life hero, and not just teach you that so you learn more stuff, 
and just store it in your head to do something later on in your life. But use yourself right now to be a leader. Be a hero right now. So rising heroes, you know, you guys told me all these different problems. You're going to tell me in rising heroes. You will tell your team in the rising heroes. Then you will work with them um, on a particular problem. And you will actually, I will teach you what is design thing. How does a de uh, leader design a solution, right? Um, or to a problem that is lasting. That's not like temporary. And then, you know, uh, and, you know, more impactful. So inshallah, I'll teach you that. I'll teach you how, what were the qualities of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu to be a leader. So you can practice that right now as you're doing the project. Uh, and so basically in the classes, there's very little of me talking and teaching you. There might be a little bit of it, but most of the class is just you guys going to be working with your team. I'll coach you and know exactly what steps you need to do. We'll make some new friends. We also have a Discord server type of thing where you can talk to each other during the week. Uh, oh. You'll make some new friends, inshallah. And uh, you will work on solving a real world problem. Last year, we had four teams. One decided they want to tackle the problem of bullying. They call themselves bully busters. And they, uh, you know, they went through the whole process and uh, of uh, designing a, pro a, pro a project. They first, um, I'm sorry, they had their own website. And then they did a weekly show. They organized a weekly show for children about bullying where lots of other kids joined in from around the world. They talked about bullying. They talked about how they are going through bullying. And, um, you know, they just even just sharing what's happening to you can really help the person who's getting bullied. So it gave them that opportunity. They heard from other children. They taught them how to be, um, you know, deal with bullying. They also had videos and khutbas about bullying. They did a lot of things actually impacting real life, being heroes for real people. Next, uh, there was an animal, uh, a team who decided they wanted to ha ha uh, help animals. So they call themselves animal guardians. They organized a fundraiser and raised money for animals, a challenge where children made homes for animals. They had their YouTube channel and so much. There was a water team which raised money for four water wells in Pakistan. Um, for oh. people who don't have clean water to drink. So now four villages in Pakistan have clean water because of these children. And they were kids just like you. How did they, they earn money? I mean, uh, part of the time they were just talking about Fortnite. <laughs> but a lot of more of the time they were talking about how to change the world, how to help the world, how to solve this problem, how to do something about it. And they did together. Together, they made a difference. And now, alhamdulillah, that Allah chose you to be the ones who hear about rising heroes. And this is not a coincidence. Do you think everybody in the world knows about this course? No, you do. Not because I wanted you to know, not because your parents wanted you to know, because Allah wanted you to know. So now I'm standing here giving you an opportunity which I don't know if anybody will ever give you again as a kid to be a real hero. I wish I had that opportunity when I was your age. Because all these, um, you know, it's been almost like 10 years since I launched e Power, And now, alhamdulillah, every single day, somebody is benefiting from the work I do. If I had learned what I'm teaching you now, what you can do, what you will learn through actually doing in Rising Heroes, you're going to do far more than that, inshallah. More than what I did. What about more than what you see most people do when you are older? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us that he created us in the best form. You, Kinza's design, Lian's design, Talha's design, uh, 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 all of your designs are better than the design of angels. Allah created you to be Khalifas on earth. And that's where, inshallah, I hope this course will help you accelerate to be that, inshallah. To bring out those gifts that you don't even know. I could do that. So many kids in Rising Heroes told me, I didn't know I could do this. I didn't know I had that ability. I had that confidence. And they found it. And I hope you will find things in you that you don't even know exist.
Okay, so if you want to register for Rising Heroes, if you want to be part of this team, then tell your parents. That's all you got to do. You're experts at that, aren't you? Nagging your parents. <laughs> so nag them for this now, that I want to be a hero. I have this opportunity. Let me take this opportunity and benefit from this. Okay, we're going to play uh, Gimkit now. Okay. What? By the way, did everybody enjoy the class? Yeah. Yes, alhamdulillah. Yeah. Oh, very good. Right. And who wants to be a rising hero? Excellent, mashallah. Okay, let's play game kit. Uh, Ibrahim, do you want to say something? Before, did you say course or Discord? Sorry? You, wait, did you say that was like a Discord server? Yeah, like, uh, uh, like a Discord server. So I haven't decided if I will use Discord or, or there's another tool called Teams. So sometimes I use that. Yeah, I've got, I've got. <laughs> 